kind of hit this the way I used to teach. It frustrated a lot of people, but I like to focus on the words. Uh, each one of those words, that holy, uh, acceptable unto God, your reasonable service, all of those things are important, and I just don't want to gloss over those things. Each one of those things is uh, important, and I think you ought to look at them separately, and that's, Lord willing, what we're doing this morning. But the first is present your bodies a living sacrifice. And the old saying is, you know, um, uh, you're supposed to, Paul says you're supposed to die daily. Paul says that, you know, um, you know you're supposed to crucify yourself. But, you know, it, it's hard. Like I said, there's an old saying that says, you know, it's hard to uh, crucify yourself because you always have that last hand free. I mean, you can nail the ones in your feet, you can nail the one hand, but that other hand is always free. <laughs> you know, you can't, it won't nail itself. And that's the hard part. That's the part about controlling yourself. Um, you know, you got to control your mind, uh, you control your body. Those are things that are important. If you don't do those things, you'll never grow. If you don't, all right. So, <clears throat> Uh, you know, who, and I guess the first thing, you know, I, I say that, you know, you're supposed to present your body a living sacrifice. Well, who would want to do that, okay? That's kind of first thing that jumped to my mind is who wants to do that? Well, um, it's, it's not what we think or what we want. That's the whole point. You know, that's the whole point about controlling yourself, you know, this inward part, that's the hard part, is, is um, it's, it's not what we want to do, it's what he thinks we need to do. That's why we need to consider it, that's why we need to do it. And <clears throat> these other things, the next one's holy, that's basically, you know, it's, to do that you need to, to be holy, you got to separate yourself. From a lot of things, okay, and, and we aren't going to dwell a lot uh, dwell a lot on that, but it's it's basically to be set apart from this world. Um, you you know, just like the rest of it says, um, you know, it's uh, be not conformed to this world. So it's the opposite of it. It's to be set apart from it. Uh, the third part is being what's it, it's a um, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So there's a right way to do it. Uh, it's not acceptable to do it halfway. God wants a commitment from you. I mean, he made a commitment for you. I mean, he had his son hang on the cross for you. And he wants a commitment from you to do this, okay? And... <clears throat> It's, you know, it's not, like I said, it's, it's, it's not what we think. But so how do you find, and, and I'm only going to touch on this because we've done it a hundred times in class already because I keep pumping it into these young men and, and the young lady I had at one time and the young lady that's down here now. But <clears throat> the way um, that you can find out what's acceptable to God and the only way is to, to know God's mind. And God gave us a Bible, and that's the whole way that we know it. We, you know, I under, understand, you know, God said that you can go to nature and know that there is a God. You can, I mean, good night. If you just look at the complexities of the human body, you have to understand that somebody created it. I mean, it's impossible. I mean, I don't like to deal with people that think they're smart because I laugh at them because they think that there is no God. But if they just were honest and they looked at the complexities in, in just our body, not only in nature also, you could look in the right amount of oxygen, the right amount of sunlight, the right amount of rain, the the right, I mean, everything is, is controlled, I mean, by God, and, and, it's, and it's right. 
we're the ones that mess it up. I mean, yeah, but anyway, and, and I'm not talking about the global warming and all that. If you're into that, then that's fine. It's going to get globally warm one day when God burns this thing up. But <clears throat> that's the one I believe in. But, you know, but yes, can man mess it up? Man messes up everything he touches. I mean, can't, you know that from trying to repair a car or repair anything or buy anything. I mean, oh, we, we joke about uh, it comes from China and it's junk. Anything man makes is junk, okay? I mean, I don't know how many times, and in, in, I've only lived a short time here on earth, Lord willing, but how many times that I've had to buy a part, put it on the car, and it doesn't work, and have to take it back to the, to the auto parts place and get it traded in for another one, and then that one probably works. I mean, I used to listen to a guy named Pat Goss on the radio. I don't know if anybody else ever did. This is a couple of years ago. I don't even know if he's still alive or on the radio now. But he would say, you know, he'd get these guys on there, and they would say, well, yeah, I, I changed that part. And Pat said, the part's bad. But I just bought it, and I just changed it. He said, all right, look, don't listen to me. Go do what you want to do. I'm done with you, okay? The part is bad. Take it back and get another one, and it'll work. He says, you have to understand, you know, I ran this a garage for, I don't know, 50 years. The reason I liked him is because he was one that diagnosed problems. It wasn't just read a code and there's 15 things on there to fix. Well, you start at one of them and you just kept fixing until you... Um, you got the right part. <laughs> Pat Goss would go in and he would actually say, okay, well, if, all right, so it's those 15 things that, well, if you do this and this and jump this and this out and it doesn't change, well, then you know it's this because it just, you know, and that's the way we need to approach life is, and the only way you're going to know anything about God, again, is by reading your Bible and studying your Bible. Um, the next thing is about reasonable service. I beseech you, brethren, uh, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Um, you know, a reasonable service. Why is being sacrificed, um, being, you know, holy and acceptable unto God, why is that reasonable? You know, why, why should we, like again, why should we live our lives that way? The simple answer is, is once you're saved, and I hope everybody in here is saved, but once you, let's, let's go to um, 1 Corinthians uh, 6, <clears throat> verse 20. And it's a couple pages to the right. Um, thank you, son. Uh, verse 20, it's the last uh, verse in that chapter. It says, For we are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in, in, in your body and in your spirit. And the key phrase there is, which are God's. You know, once you got saved, your life really isn't your own. And I know that there's different, everybody here is at different stages of that, understanding that. But that is what will give you clarity. That is what will help you live your life. And that's what will help you control your body and control your mind. Is that understanding that it's, it's not yours anymore. <laughs> when you got saved, you are bought with a price. <clears throat> and it's, which, you know, in and in your spirit, which are God's. And there's a couple other verses. I'm, I won't give you them, but, but that's, that's what it is. Um, if you go back to just the verse just above it, it says, um, you know, it says, what? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which 
ye have of God, and you are not your own, <laughs> that's the key. <laughs> that's, that's the whole key to it is, you know, once you got saved, you're not your own anymore. And it would take me, it would take too long but to teach it correctly. But once you got saved, the Holy Spirit resides inside of you. Okay, there's a verse in Colossians that talks about that God made an operation without hands. When you get saved, God creates a clean space in you where he can reside and be there inside of you. And um, that makes you different than everybody else in the Bible. That's one of the keys to understand and, you know, is that to rightly divide your Bible is, um, is the key to understanding how it all fits together. Um, and in our, our time, we have God residing within us, but it's not like in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, if they reached out and they touched something that was unclean, they became unclean. Now, we don't have to do that because God created that clean space. There's a buffer, and I don't know how big it is. I, I can, I got my own ideas, okay? But, but there's, there's a buffer there. In, in the Old Testament, when, you know, somebody, like I said, they, they couldn't touch a dead body or they couldn't eat something. You know, they could only eat certain things because it made them unclean. Their whole body was unclean, their body, soul, and spirit. And that's why they had to separate themselves from everybody else to keep everybody else from being unclean that they associated with. Um, and that's the only reason we can all fellowship together because I can almost bet at least one of you in here sinned sometime this morning. Okay, and if I was around you, then I would have become unclean too, okay, but that's not the way it works. God made it so that he could reside inside of us and that even when we touched something wrong or saw something wrong or did something wrong or whatever, um, we, we don't become unclean. That part will stay clean all the time. Um, that's as simple as I'm going to explain it this morning. But anyway, so <clears throat> we're his now. That's why it's reasonable, okay? You know, most, and I was not raised, I didn't have rights when I was raised up, okay? Um, and everybody, you know, below me or younger than me has all these rights, okay, and, and privileges, um, when you become a Christian, you don't anymore. You're subjugated to what God wants. And you're responsible to find out what God wants you to do, and, and you're responsible to do it. Um, all right, so that's your reasonable service. And then in the next verse, <clears throat> it says, uh, and be not conformed to this world. Oh, boy, I could spend days on that. Uh, weeks on that teaching. Uh, I noticed everybody kept their eyes down on that one, okay? Being conformed to this world, it's so hard. This whole world, world is geared. I mean, and I may not have had any rights, but I'm not, peer pressure is, is an amazing thing. Uh, it's great when it's used for the right thing, but it's terrible when it's used for the wrong thing. Um, and but that's what being conformed to this world. If you're going to be a Christian, you're going to stand out. You're going to be different. You're going to, um, you know, um, it's just you're going to. <laughs> you're not going to. You're not going to fit in. The only place you've got a chance of fitting in is here. And and that's hard enough. <laughs> Okay, if you're living in the real world, it's hard um, to, to maintain and to be a, a Christian all the time. It's hard, you know, and uh, like I said, it's a growth process. You know, the, the new Bibles change that um, to be 
uh, be not conformed to this world, to be, they say, uh, this world has a pattern. Maybe that's true, but that's not what the Bible's talking about. The world has a way that it does things, and it's driven by, I don't, it, look, honestly, I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings, but if you're stupid enough, well, <laughs> if, if you honestly believe that what you see on TV is geared to your betterment, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I don't want to burst your bubble, but that's the truth. That's geared to advertising to get you to buy something, getting you to, um, to act out in ways that you shouldn't act out in. Um, all of those things are, you know, the simplest way the world tells you if it feels good, do it. No. Um, let, let's go to 1 John. It's all summed up in, in, in these, this verse in 1 John. <clears throat> And that's toward the back, guys, a couple back from the very back of your Bible. First John chapter 2. In verse 16, it says, For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. So, it, 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 honestly, it is that simple. I mean, it, I know that there's, well, no, there isn't any gray. It's all black and white. It's, if it's of the world, then it's black. And if, it's, if, it's not of, if it's of God, then it's white. I mean, there's no middle ground. Um, these things, the world tells you, if it feels good, do it. That's the lust of the flesh. No, that's the opposite of what you're supposed to do. Some of the things you do may feel good if you're doing them for the right thing and that kind of thing, but that's not the reason you do it. You, what you do is you ought to be doing things to please God, not because they feel good. That's what the world tells you. The world tells you uh, if it looks good, get it. <laughs> that's, that's the... Um, the lust of the eyes. I mean, all of those things, and and I've lived long enough to see the difference in TV. Um, we don't really have a quote unquote. We have a television in the house, but we use it mostly for movies and that type of thing. So I don't watch television per se, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, I watch YouTube. Okay, and my wife will attest to it, and. The things you see, I mean, it's just, it's so much different than when I was their age or younger. I mean, it's just night and day. I mean, you look at, I'm way off base, but the Andy Griffith show and stuff like that, I mean, those were clean. There's nothing like that on TV nowadays, nothing. I mean, and you say, well, that's because it's boring and nobody wants to watch it. Well, Look, I, I, I'm lost to you. If you, if, if, you already, if you think that way and you still think that way, then you haven't heard anything I've said this morning, okay? Those things are they, they're put in front of your eyes to make you act out in a way or to buy something or to do something that's against what God wants in your life. It, it's that simple. Then the last of it um, <clears throat> is the pride of life. You know, everybody wants to build up your self-esteem, okay? And, and I can understand a little bit of that, okay? And, and, and I think that when you're raising children, you have to build them up to a certain extent. I mean, you want them to build up spiritually more, but when it comes to the point where you're puffing out your chest because I did it, and I've done it, and, and oh, I can do this, and, and yes, I've got more money now and be, than you, and because I'm a good businessman, all of that stuff, that's the, that's the pride of life. That's against God. 
I mean, it's, you know, maybe I'm just not saying it right. But, you know, if basically, and I've told them this before, if the world tells you to do it, then the, it's best that you do the opposite as much as you can. That's going to be your safest approach in life spiritually. Now, if you want to be successful and make all this money and do all this stuff down here, do what you want to do. I don't care. I mean, honestly, I mean, I mean, it'll hurt me to see you go that direction, but you can live your own life. Everybody in here is an adult. You can make your own decisions. I mean, I'm standing up here now just telling you what I see out of the Bible. And if you don't want to buy it and, and you want to try to go out and strive and, and make all the money you can, I just, there, well, we don't have a timeline up here. It would be great if we did. But your life is, is nothing but a blip, okay? What you, life down here, it doesn't matter. I mean, I met somebody that's 102 the other day. Okay, but that life, that 102 years, is, is nothing but a blip in time. Eternity is, I, I don't have a good explanation for eternity. <laughs> I mean, I've heard a couple of illustrations. One was uh, if an eagle flew uh, past a steel ball the size of a basketball, and every thousand years that eagle brushes the basketball with his wing. By the time that wing, or that, that steel ball is down to the size of a, a BB, then that would be like the beginning of eternity. <laughs> I mean, it, it's unfathomable. It, eternity, and, and you're going to spend eternity somewhere. It, the way I believe it, you're in eternity now, okay? But that, that gets all confusing uh, because God, or at least God's in eternity, let me say it that way. And he's looking down on us down in here on this earth, and we're living our lives. And, but each one of us in here has eternal existence. Maybe not eternal life, but we have an eternal existence. And we're going to spend it somewhere, okay? And if you aren't saved, then you're going to spend it in hell. It's as simple as that. You're going to burn forever. <laughs> um, but if you are saved, and that's who I'm trying to talk to today mainly, is think about that. I mean, when you get to heaven at whatever point, I mean, it could be tomorrow, it could be 50 years from now, okay? But that's it. The only rewards you're going to ever have are what you've done for Christ down here on earth. There's no chance of advancement in heaven. You can't go to school in heaven and become a third, second, go from third class to second class to first class to head whatever, okay? That's it. What, whatever you, only what you've done down here is the only thing that's going to matter up there. And I've got a very poor example, but say, you know, a Bible talks about some places, he talks about uh, people being rulers over cities because of certain things they did. Okay, well, what if you never did anything for God down here? That means for whatever you end up doing in heaven, whatever you've earned, and you're doing in heaven, you're going to do for eternity. I mean, eternity, not just a hundred years, not just a thousand years, not just a million years, but for eternity. I mean, what if you only earn enough, um, enough instead of being a ruler of a city, maybe you end up being a garbage man. That means forever, for all eternity, you're a garbage person. That's it. Now, garbage people are needed. Don't get me wrong. It's a noble, well, I don't know if it's a noble profession, 
but it's definitely a profession that's needed and valued. But, I mean, like I said, down here, we're all geared to, well, we can go to um, college at night or college online, and we can advance ourselves and get a better job or get a better pay. None of that is going to happen in heaven. <laughs> you, you're set. Once, once you depart this earth, only what you've done down here is going to affect what, you're, what you do for eternity. And it, it's not going to be sitting up on a cloud and uh, playing a harp and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Maybe it is. I, I don't see it in the Bible, though. I see that we're going to be ruling and reigning with Christ down here on earth. Or, you know, and or we're doing certain tasks but like I said, you'll never have a chance to advance past. And, and that's the thing about not being conformed to the world. Let me try to get back to where I was. Um, <clears throat> if, you know, if you conform, like I say, if you conform yourself down here, and then you're going to end up doing everything you want down here, everything that satisfies you down here, everything you see, everything that you desire, you're going to do your bucket list down here, and then when you get up there to heaven, you're going to have nothing, because you spent it all down here on you, and that's not what God wants. Um, let's see. Um, all right, last one in that verse, uh, verse 2, is you need to be transformed. Your, your mind needs to be transformed. Um, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that which is, prove that what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, your you know you're supposed to. Uh, if we're, let me go back to 2 Corinthians real quick. Uh, when we get saved, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. And that's what's supposed to happen. You're supposed to renew this mind. You're supposed to be transformed um, by the renewing of your mind. You're supposed to put on a mind of Christ. Uh, all right. The other, the other verse I had for this is uh, in Acts 23. About out of time, like always, because I get sidetracked. Uh, Twenty-three, one, where Paul is uh, is talking here, and Paul earnestly beheld the council and said, "Men and brethren, I have lived in a uh, in all good conscience before God until this day." That's what we ought to desire. That's the trans, uh, having our minds transformed. We should desire that um, we should live in a way where we can say that uh, I've lived in a good conscience before God until this day. Um, you know, the we, we, way we say it is we have a clear conscience. Um, the only way you can do that is by uh, keeping it to get a clear conscience is by by fessing up basically you know um, everybody in here does wrong occasionally and what you have to do is first you have to recognize you did it uh, although for some of us that's real easy because we think about it and then we do it that's the sad part is you know we don't just get caught up in something we actually plan it sometimes 
that's that's pretty bad. Um, but so what you need to do is um, you confess it to God. Then then you figure out what happened. You know what put you in that way. I mean, I remember when I was a youth, uh, probably as old as my oldest boy back there, and uh, I pretty new Christian, and I ended up doing some things that I ought not to have done, okay? So, I found out, or in retrospect, I look back on my life, well, look back then, and said, well, I'm doing these things at a certain place. I just won't go to that place, and then I'll stop them. And, and that helped. And that, that's, that's a, you, you've got to, um, you've got to put steps, and, and they, they won't always work every time. But you have to put steps in your life so you don't recreate or compound your problems. You know, if, if you realize you've got a besetting sin or a sin, well, Figure out a way to minimize it first and work on it and keep praying and praying and, and then eventually you'll get control over it. If you, but if you just let it, if you, if you don't, if you don't become, if you could form yourself to the world and you don't transform your mind and you don't try to do anything to stop it, it's never going to stop. That thing you're going to do over and over and over and over again. And then at some point, you're just going to justify it and say, well, that's just the way I am. No, <laughs> it's not the way you are. It's not, none of us are like that. We can change a, a habit. We can change the way we do things. We can change our lives to live in more in line with God. Um, it, it's a choice. And, you know, and the beginning of it is, is understanding that you're not your own. You don't belong to yourself. You know, that's, that's the first step, in my opinion. And then, and then you build on those things a little bit at a time and, and, and know you're not going to be sinlessly per perfect overnight. For my time down here, I'm still not sinlessly perfect. And, and I've made some effort. Okay, um, anyway, all right, so this is probably a pretty good place to stop, uh, but we'll, uh, well, you boys next week will pick up in the back, um, starting out on the, this controlling your body and controlling your mind, specific things about them, but, uh, you know, anyway. All right, Lord, I ask you now in Jesus' name, Lord, to bless this time, my Father. I uh, pray that uh, uh, that I was clear, Lord. That's the main thing I wanted to be is, is clear, Lord. I pr pray that I presented what you wanted me to present. And I ask you now in Jesus' name to bless this time, Lord. Bless the service this morning, Lord. Be with the, the preacher, Lord. Be with the classrooms in the back, Lord. Be with the things if we go on the street today, if we, whatever activities we do, Lord, I pray we do them for you, with you in mind, Lord, and uh, because we love you, and thank you again in Jesus' name, amen.